Hi, my name is Katie Thacker and I am a managing editor with Simply Charlotte Mason. And I am very pleased to have here today the authors of our new Charlotte Mason Practical Geometry course, Dr. Julie Ryle and Tabitha Werges. Welcome. Thank you Thank for joining you. me. <laughs> Glad to be here. Yes, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about the background for the course uh, for the families who are going to be using this with their children, and we're really excited to have this for them. So first I wanted to ask you a little bit about what is it about geometry and specifically practical geometry that makes it so important for us to include it in our homeschools? My favorite um, reason for studying geometry is just the the building up of logic and so we can start that with practical geometry and it gives us a really concrete hands-on way to build these foundational skills that will continue to build upon as they go through their high school geometry course yes it's even a subject that you use and carry over into other subjects as well even thomas jefferson used it whenever he wrote the declaration of independence because the logical ideas that you're building on he had to lay those out and build up those reasoning skills as he went through the entire thing. So um, it's just, it's it's a concrete subject that carries on to all kinds of other subjects. <laughs> I did not know that about Thomas Jefferson. That is really fascinating and it makes a lot of sense. So I did want to ask a little bit about the background, about what got you into this project and what inspired you to do uh, all of this work researching Charlotte's methods that she used with her students in practical geometry. Well, about five years ago, uh, Tabitha and I were both at the same um, homeschool conference, the Charlotte Mason Homeschool Conference, and Rochelle was speaking there. And she was talking about the books that Charlotte used within her courses uh, long ago. And, and she had some examples of books there. And we were just fascinated with, with these, these old textbooks. <laughs> old and math textbooks. <laughs> I was just like, what? <laughs> I was sure. thrilled with it. I had a student, my, my oldest daughter was at that age where we were about to embark upon a study of practical geometry. And I got to see this book there. And um, I was really thrilled with it and quite impressed. And I thought, I want to go home and use this. I was, I was all fired up to use it that fall. So I started teaching from it. Uh, to my daughter, and we had another homeschool family that met with us once a week. And I did this lesson with three teenage girls, or preteen girls, um, and we had so much fun with it. But during the course of, of teaching it to them, and the other mom was sitting in, the other homeschool mom, uh, I realized that this was not a resource that I could suggest to another homeschooler who was not a mathematician. The book was written to a mathematician to be able to use, um, and it, it had a brilliant outline and principles, but you really needed someone to take it and know how to use mm -hmm. it. And the other mom was was enjoying going through the course. She was doing it herself. <laughs> and she understood the principles and learned a lot, but it was not something that she could take yes. home. She even had a science background, right? Yeah, Same but she is a biologist. <laughs> yeah, but, like... um, it was not something she could take home and use with her daughters. Right. Um, so I thought, oh, this needs to be accessible for homeschool moms. Yeah, I had a similar experience. So since we saw the book at the same time, um, I had been trying and thinking about implementing the specific book that Charlotte Mason used for practical geometry um, in my home the year before. But then when we saw Rochelle at the conference, we got to hear so much more about just how Charlotte Mason did her lessons and how hands-on and exploratory it was. And it was just a completely different way than I had learned math and how I had learned geometry specifically. And I was just in awe and so giddy about being able to do it my, for myself, let alone for, with my kids. And then the next year, I actually ended up teaching at a private Charlotte Mason school. So I got to do it with a group of kids. Um, and so we were actually both doing that at the same time. And we would call each other yeah. and talk about well, here's how I had to adapt this lesson, or here's how I presented this idea, and we had each other to bounce this off of. So we had the students in front of us of varying abilities with math and, and abilities with drawing skills and how they could use their hands. And, um, and yeah, so we, we saw that I loved the aspect of how it presented geometrical concepts and how concrete it made them before they really came on to understanding geometric 
concepts. <laughs> and you're learning the concrete of it. And then you go on to learn more and be able to build on those foundations. And so I wanted, I was so excited to use it and it, it presented it really well, but it was hard. I was jumping around a lot. Like we would start off in the first part of the book and then I'd have to pull from what exercises we wanted to use. And it just seemed very out of order. Um, I was fine with it in the classroom, but I quickly realized I couldn't hand this over to one of my other teachers that were there. I couldn't hand it over to other homeschool friends. They would ask me about math to use with their children. And I was just like, oh, you should use this book. No, you probably shouldn't because you'll get so frustrated with it, you know, <laughs> and, I, and I can't be in every place and to help you how to work, how to do it. Um, so, yeah, so we started asking around um, other moms and asking mm. if they wanted it. <laughs> so it sounds like based on some things that you guys have told me is that Charlotte did not use the book straight through either. Uh, she adapted it for her classroom situation and teaching parents how to use it. And so it sounds like you've been able to take your individual experiences with math in an academic setting, Charlotte's methods, and this book, and stir all of that up and stick it in the <laughs> oven and come out with a course that's got all of that laid out for us, which is excellent. I don't mind math myself, but I wouldn't want to think about it as much as you guys have done for me, <laughs> so I really appreciate that. So... Given all of that, tell us a little bit about what kinds of the Charlotte Mason benefits that we've come to know and love, what kinds of things are students going to see in their, or they're going to experience in their classes when they're doing the geometry, the practical geometry work? So I think the one of the main benefits of studying practical geometry is developing accuracy and precision and the recognition that there is absolute truth that we cannot veer from. That we, that, yeah, that we recognize that from God's creation. So we, these truths are things that we are found all around us. Um, there's geometry in the world everywhere that we see. It's in creation. Our creator is using that. <laughs> and in studying it, we're getting to study more about our creator. And that's, I mean, that's what children are getting to learn from it is they get to learn this concrete thing in their house and then they get to turn around and visualize it when they see a flower <laughs> that's growing um, or how the planets move around the sun. Um, and it's just all amazing and awe <laughs> inspiring. Absolutely. So something that is unique here is that many of us think geometry is a credit to be earned in high school, that it is not progressionally something that many of us grew up experiencing as being part of, there was a little bit, right, in our elementary school in a mm -hmm. conventional school environment with the shape naming and things like sure. that. And knowing from your course, there's a little bit more depth there. So what is it that Charlotte was going for when she started introducing geometry in that late elementary, middle school age range versus waiting until 10th, 11th, yeah. 12th grade? So Charlotte Mason actually kind of began geometry way earlier than than, ele than middle school, even late elementary. So she started it with measures and sloyd. So those are very important things to begin doing with your students uh, in the younger elementary years as they build up. And then once they, because she, she start as with all of her subjects, she started with the concrete, with things they could grab a hold of and do. And then she just expounded on that and kept building on it. And so practical geometry is that next step. So once you've been messing with some of these tools and you are able to have the dexterity in your hands a little bit more to move on to learning more geometry concepts, then she has you do practical geometry. And so that's where you start to build those basic foundations. It's your, it's your manipulatives for geometry, basically. And so you start to build those basic concrete foundations, uh, being able to mess with it. Children start to learn that the the angles of a triangle can only add up to be 180 degrees because they have actually built triangles and experience that it can go together no other way so that when they go on to geometry in high school that's just obvious to them and they can build on to that some of the theorems and postulates that we build. <laughs> yeah just, so, so many of Charlotte's the things that we love so much about those gentle introductions that are already tucked away in the brain and the student is very comfortable with it sounds like the students get that experience as well through geometry. Yes yes. So that's why you would start it in late elementary, middle school, so that they can go ahead and get that before they get to high school, so that they have that there already. 
Absolutely. I, I think that um, the study of practical geometry may seem daunting to some parents when they think of their high school geometry experience. And they're like, wait, don't we do this in high school? <laughs> are, are we really starting this in middle school? I'm going to have a geometry text for my student. And it's not the same. So in high school, we're studying Euclidean geometry. So when you think back to your geometry experience in high school, you very well may think of writing proofs. Yes. Um, and so that's what a lot of people remember from their high school experience. Or using formulas. That, that was mine. Formulas. Lots of formulas. <laughs> Having a lot of formulas and just plugging numbers in to find volume, to find a height of a triangle, that kind of thing. And that's not at all what we're doing in practical geometry. So I, I view this as our fun math to do one day a week. And so we've got this. Uh, but I do think that it gives a great leg up for when you reach that high school geometry. You have all of this experience working with these concepts. Um, so it's going to prepare them really well for high school geometry. And I've had the pleasure of being one of the editors in the course, and I love that it's starting with very simple things like solid objects and faces and vertices and things like that, but it gently walks through to the point that you're talking about things like alternate interior angles. Yeah. <laughs> and I get so excited when I was reading that because it's presented in a way that probably makes more sense to me now than it ever had before, and I have Yay. taken geometry in high school. <laughs> so that is, I'm really excited for people to be able to experience that with their students. So given all that, let's say that I've had a Charlotte Mason's homeschool going, and how do I know that my student is ready to take on practical geometry as a more formal introduction if we've been doing a little bit of the sloid and the weights and measures that came through the Charlotte Mason Elementary Arithmetic Series and things like that? How do we know that we're ready to add that in? Once your student can handle using a ruler um, and is able to hold that steady, has that level of dexterity, uh, and also can work with fractions and with decimals. So we're going to be working with uh, fractions of an inch up to one eighth and then, and then millimeters or decimals of a centimeter. And so once they've had that arithmetic experience and are somewhat comfortable with it, they don't have to be at the level of like multiplying fractions. But if they can add and combine fractional uh, measures, then, then they're ready to begin the study. Yeah, yeah. If they're able to use a ruler, then they know enough about fractions to be able to start the study. And if you've been doing Charlotte Mason math, you've been messing with money for a while. So you know a bit about decimals, and so you're good with that as well. Um, so as long as you uh, have been introduced to fractions and decimals, then you're begin you're ready to begin the study. Even if you feel like your your child is not really good at dexterity with their hands and being able to do fine tuning and things like that, they'll they'll be able to start because they're they're going to start learning that through the practical geometry lessons and they'll start they'll start getting those skills. Um, so it's a really great spot for them to work on that. <laughs> And I love that throughout the book, you've got regular reminders to encourage us as moms and teachers and the students that using these tools takes practice. A compass is not going to necessarily make a perfect circle the first time that you try to spin it around. Yes. Uh, that steel point and a protractor. <laughs> where it doesn't make a perfect circle. This happens. <laughs> right. And a protractor might be a little difficult to line up and the you may create an angle and it may be off by a few degrees and and in the book, you guys talk about acceptable error, knowing that there's a human error uh, that's going to take place there exactly. and, and understanding what that means. Excellent. So thank you so much for coming to speak with me about the project. We're really excited to offer this course for families. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to seeing more from you in the future. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks.